So after breakfast, I walked into Westwood this morning. Doing more walking these days, so I'm feeling good. And gas prices are way up, so I want to kind of fall in love with Los Angeles again. I've been living here since 1994, and it's kind of been a fantasy of mine since 1982 when MTV came out and I saw all these pretty girls in these music videos. And I thought, ah, oh, LA's the place. So LA is still the place. I like to walk the streets and fall in love with the city once again. So, of course, I wear my fringes and my, my yarmulke as I walk, and uh, it's going down Pico Boulevard towards Westwood Boulevard, and uh, this guy with a yarmulke, a complete stranger, pulled over by the 20th Century Fox Studios and asked me if I wanted a ride. So, that's one of the cool things about <clears throat> being an Orthodox Jew is we look out for each other. I remember hearing this story about uh, uh, Orthodox Jew driving along on the New Jersey Turnpike. And he saw this man wearing a yarmulke pulled over off on the side of the road. And so he stopped and helped the guy change a tire. And once they changed the tire, the guy like took his yarmulke off and put it in like the glove compartment. So the Orthodox Jew asked him, well, why'd you do that? And he said, well, I noticed that people you know, who are wearing yarmulkes that uh, you know, other people stop and help them out. So, <laughs> when I break down, I always keep like a yarmulke in my glove compartment so that I can put it on and then usually someone will stop and help me. So, uh, near, near the end of my walk, I wanted to use a restroom, so I popped into McDonald's. Now, Jews not supposed to go to a non-kosher restaurant. Step inside, so I, I took my yarmulke off I was too lazy to tuck my fringes in. I made quick use of the restroom at McDonald's so nobody saw me. I got to speak to a group of psychotherapists about the Alexander Technique. So I didn't go in with a set agenda. I wanted to be spontaneous in the moment and try to pick up what people were interested in. So if you go into something with a strict agenda, you will usually kind of tighten up and uh, compress a little bit and that's not how I wanted to be. I wanted to be free and open and in the moment and I wanted to talk to them a little bit about sitting because no matter how you sit it's not good for you and sitting is basically as bad for you as smoking so there's a new study that came out in the last few months so psychotherapists sit a lot. Now there are better ways and worse ways to sit there's no good chair and no good way to sit. It's really going to take a toll on you and it's going to usually cause you back trouble. So I wanted to point that out. There are things that you can do to ease the strain that it's going to place on your back. But uh, no matter how you sit, it's going to cause significantly more strain for your back than if you're standing up or lying down. So I talked about how it every emotion requires a certain alignment of the body. When you're up like this, it's very hard to feel anger, depression, sadness, contempt, any of those emotions. When you're up, when you're at your full length and you're taking your full space in the world, you kind of tend to feel tranquil. So I remember sitting in the, the waiting room before going in to give my talk and I was like, hmm, this is my favorite long sleeve uh, t-shirt the last three years, I've been wearing it a lot. When I graduated from the Alexander Training Institute, they gave me some patches because I had this big hole on this elbow. So, sitting there in the waiting room going, hmm, maybe I could have made a better sartorial choice. Hmm. Hmm, hmm, hmm. So, I love talking about the Alexander Technique. It's my work, it's my passion. And uh, they seem to immediately get what I was talking about. So if you really want to feel anger, depression, sadness, you have to kind of pull down in. And uh, so every emotion requires that certain alignment of the body. Now, it's nothing wrong with feeling anger, depression, sadness at times, but you usually don't want to get stuck in those states. So most of us are going to be better off if we're in a state of tranquility. So when you're in awareness, such as right now, I'm seeing both the right wall and the left wall, simultaneously. So I can't see both the right wall and the left wall and not be in the present moment. So when you're in the present moment, you're less likely to be 
anxious or depressed or usually or angry. Instead, you're more likely to be tranquil as long as you're in the present moment. So I can look ahead to the future and think, oh, how am I going to pay my credit cards, for instance? And how am I, going to, am I going to launch my Alexander Technique business so I get more students? Or and when am I going to get married and have kids? That's what taking me out of the present moment. But if I listen to all the sounds around me, see both sides of uh, my room, so the right wall, the left wall, and everything in between, the soft eyes, then I'm in the present moment, I'm in a state of awareness. And I am taking up my full space in the world. If I was to start like thinking and worrying about the future, or getting depressed about the past, that would require me to kind of tighten and compress my neck and my whole torso. Hmm. And you'd see my face kind of scrunch up as I'm doing this thinking, and computing, and analyzing. So when you're thinking, <clears throat> that almost always takes you out of the present moment. Most thinking is about things that have happened in the past and concerns about things in the future. And most of the time, it doesn't do you any good. So obviously, there are times when you need to think, but most of the time, you're much better off being in a state of awareness, having soft eyes, seeing all that's in front of you, hearing all the sounds around you, and being real to the moment. So uh, then I walked home, celebrated with a delicious orange juice smoothie. And uh, it's kind of fun to just walk the streets of Los Angeles and the uh, city feels different when you're there on the ground rather than just in your car driving by.